Hi there, and welcome to the latest episode of Socially Distant Discover Nature. Change is afoot. Terrible joke. But before we get on to that, we'll have a brief catch up. Following on from last week's episode on our discussion on the importance of ivy, Sean sent in this amazing photograph of an ivy bee. He says these are relatively newcomers to York and he got one of the first records of them in the entire area over an Aiken, so that's really good. And as the name suggests, ivy is an extremely important source of food for the ivy bees. And they're quite easily recognised with their little stripy abdomens. We've also had this picture taken from Sam and the recycling team at St. Nick's. She found this weird green looking creature on the aluminium bags. I think it's some sort of oak bush cricket, but there are a couple of species and I need to consult an expert to find out which one it is. But general ID, the sheer length of the antennae relative to the body. That is a classic sign of being a cricket rather than the close relatives grasshoppers, which have very short antennae. So last week I mentioned a format change, and the reason this is happening is because St. Nick's now have a go-back plan in place for ecotherapy participants. So last week, myself and all the other ecotherapy tutors and our glorious leader, Kathy and Hannah, we all met up in a socially distant way at St. Nick's to discuss the practicalities, how to keep people safe, what routes we'd be taking, and just talking through the general process of it. Sainix runs a vast ecotherapy program, so it's not just Discover Nature, there's the Creative Writing, Book Club, Nordic Walking, Bearing Fruit, and many more that I've possibly forgotten and will get a kick in the shins, socially distant kick in the shins, for not mentioning. It will be tricky! It will take some getting used to, the, the centre itself, the building will remain closed and the compound itself is closed to members of the public. The Nature Reserve continues to be open all the time, valuable, valuable resource, and we'll be using as much of that outside space as possible to connect with nature, to connect with each other in a socially distant and safe way. Now for various reasons not everyone might be able to attend or to come back and so Certainly for Discover Nature, these videos will continue, at least in the short term, to give a taste of the St. Nick's nature to those who can't physically get there in person. And also for the, the wider audience. All two of you. As I'm going to be on the St. Nick's site on a regular basis, come rain or shine, the format of this video will change to a more discussion of what our group finds on a weekly basis. So rather than me coming up with a specific topic, nature will be our guide, and depending on what we experience, that will inform what we talk about. So I think each week we'll focus on two, maybe three things that we found, have a little bit of a chat about them, and we'll see how the season progresses as time goes on. It might be raining and grey and cold and a little bit miserable as we progress into autumn, but there is still life out there and there's still amazing things to be found. And on our Ecotherapy Tutor Meetup, we did have a good walk around and saw some interesting things which I'm going to share with you now. Firstly, you'll all be pleased to know that the creepy forest bear is still in existence! <laughs> through the woodland areas, in addition to all the kind of eh, eh, noises of angry squirrels shouting at us, grrr, nature people disturbing the peace, there was fungi. Fungi. Lots of fungi. Now, it would be bad of me to make the joke that I'm a fun guy, so I won't. But we are in fungi season now, although technically fungi is here all the time, so every season is fungi season. But now, autumn, fall, if you're in America, is the time when a lot of them become visible. The fruiting bodies are out, and we saw several striking examples of these. The first one is this orange spots on our dead twigs and stuff. It seems to be called coral spot fungus. Very vibrant splashes of colour. 
while growing on tree trunks of what I think was a deceased elder tree, is jelly ear. Cold because it looks like an ear made of jelly. Isn't it nice when names just work like that? It's quite fun to poke. Wash your hands afterwards. But perhaps the most spectacular fungi was spotted by the crazy writing chooser Emma, and she found this earth star. A little bit like a, a volcano, it's this sort of orb of a hole in the top with the kind of peeled segments around the side. And if you give it a little gentle poke, there'll be a puff of spores coming out like a tiny Vesuvius. It's extremely fun to do. Again, wash your hands afterwards. There we have it, that was a flavour of stuff that is out and about. Now, I appreciate that not everyone can make it to St. Nick's, especially considering at least one of our viewers is watching from Argentina. Bit of a trek, but the stuff we're finding, certainly across the UK it may apply, but also if you're watching from further afield, do let us know what's happening with you. It's always good to see nature from other countries, other places. I'm enthusiastic to be back, and I guess it feels, well, if not like normal, then certainly it feels less abnormal. And quite frankly, I will take that right now. So there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, when we talk about finds of the week, who knows what they will be, stay safe. Probably should have cut my toenails before I did that and put socks on and trousers. Such is life! <clears throat>